On this edition of Shelby This Week, we will give you the real story on what happened at one Shelby Township residence after a fire broke out at a house and a man ended up badly burned. A summer attraction will not be opening as soon as you thought. We'll tell you how the project will be moving forward and when you can expect it to open. The Shelby Township Police Department will be releasing a new design of something they use every day. Get a sneak peek of the new car that will be hitting the roads and keeping our officers safe and able to patrol the area with ease. And a major intersection will close for the second time this summer. As crews prepare to work on the lanes of this roadway, we will tell you how long you can expect the road to be closed. All this and more on Shelby This Week. An explosion at a home near 22 Mile Road in Van Dyke led to the evacuation of the Planet Fitness a half mile up the road. Just come strolling in like he was on a mall walk. Gym goers at Planet Fitness at 23 Mile Road in Van Dyke were forced to evacuate the facility Friday after a man came running in with severe burns on his body from the explosion of a nearby meth lab. We responded to the 8,000 block of Willow Ray in reference to a house fire explosion. Uh, our initial investigation led us to believe that the individual there was in the process of manufacturing methamphetamines. Police say a small explosion came from the back room of a home where a man was cooking meth. He was severely burned, then drove himself up to the gym to take a shower. And when witnesses saw him, the gym was quickly evacuated. This guy running in with no shirt, burns and socks and a pair of gym shorts. Something didn't look right. And then when they, uh, everybody came flying in, you know, it was an issue. And now that he caused an inconvenience, all my stuff's locked in there. Authorities came to examine the car the man drove to the gym, as well as the home where the explosion took place, for further evidence. The gym remained closed for nearly six hours. We will continue to follow this story and bring you updates as the investigation continues. Gene Shepherd Park will be the home of the new splash pad here in Shelby Township, but the construction of the project will not begin this summer as originally planned. After bids came in too high of the proposed budget, the Board of Trustees felt strongly to deny both bids. Township Treasurer Michael Flynn made the motion to deny the bids and now they will open the bidding process back up to potential builders. The township hopes to get the splash pad constructed in the fall and will officially open when the weather warms up in the spring of 2018. The Shelby Township Police Department honored two important officers. Stacy Sansaterra has more. The fact what they did was beyond heroic. The Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police recently bestowed a great honor on two of Shelby Township's finest. Sergeant Troy Tichnell and Officer Paul Fox were both nominated by myself and they selected them to receive the Medal of Valor. The Medal of Valor is the highest decoration for bravery exhibited by a police officer in the United States. They're the only second and third officers in the department's history to ever receive this award. And this prestigious award does not come easy. These guys are out here on a daily basis, you know, law enforcement officers uh, doing great things for our, our society, keeping everybody safe, uh, coming across all kinds of crazy things in their daily, their daily activities. And on this certain day, officers encountered a 15-year-old drowning in, in, a, in a pond. Drowning in a pond is terrifying in itself. Now add in some extreme elements. This was in February. The, the waters were freezing. Uh, I was less than 30 seconds away when I arrived. He was in the middle of the... Uh, uh, lake slash pond at uh, Arrowhead. And despite not having any training in water rescue, Sergeant Tichnell jumped into action. With the assistance of a woman named Marissa Vasquez, um, she was able to, uh, as I was running around the lake to get closer to him, I observed her with my peripheral vision and she was running toward the lake and she had a life preserver in her hand. By this point, Officer Paul Fox arrived on scene to assist with the rescue. Troy, hang on, I got an inflatable. Sergeant Tichnell went out first uh, with a life ring and a rope, and he got out pretty far. While pulling him in, the ice gave out when I got him halfway in. Sergeant Tichnell went through the ice, and myself, we went, I went through closer to shore. And falling through the ice in February is not something that these men will soon forget. It was, it was pretty cold, but uh, adrenaline takes over, so you really don't feel until after the fact. 
That adrenaline was a defining factor in getting the team to safety, as our very own superheroes never had any hesitation. I mean, anybody that does the job will tell you there's really no other option. There isn't. You have a 15-year-old boy. He was screaming uh, several times that he didn't want to die. Um, so that's a, that's a good motivator right there. Well, we're, we're all parents, and you know, you got to think about, well, what if that was my child? So that's, that's the first thing you think about. You don't really think about uh, being a police officer and this is my duty. It's more of a uh, parental instinct and, and wanting to help. And that parental instinct has brought great pride to our department. The pride was glowing off them and it was glowing off me. It's an honor, I mean, to represent Shelby Township. Uh, it's, it's truly an honor. Oh, it's a huge honor to be recognized by the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police. And I think it just goes to show that there have been a lot of great things in this department over the years, but uh, the chief is, has taken it to the next level as far as getting that recognition for our fellow officers. For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacy Sansaterra. At Shelby This Week, we want to congratulate both of those deserving officers on the hard work and dedication they show to our township. For 10 weeks, Sergeants Matt Barr and Jeff Bellamo with the Shelby Township Police Department studied at Northwestern University. Barr and Bellamo were among 35 law enforcement professionals in the state of Michigan to graduate from Northwestern University Center for Public Safety School of Police Staff and Command. Uh, this is one of the most prestigious, uh, if not the most prestigious, law enforcement executive development program in the country. Uh, I'm myself, Deputy Chief Coyle, all five of our lieutenants have been through the program and several, about a handful of our sergeants now have been through it. The program teaches the officers cutting edge modern law enforcement techniques in management and leadership. The program is very successful and offers the officials new knowledge and information to bring back to the Shelby Township Police Force. My philosophy on training is you pay now or you pay later. And what, it, what that basically means is you train our officers and make them professional as possible and have, make sure they have all the tools they need and all the information. And if you don't do that, you're neglecting them. And what happens when you neglect them, you're going to see lawsuits surface and you're going to see payouts in lawsuits. So uh, thank God, since I've been here, we've not paid out a dollar in lawsuits, not one dollar, and we have no pending litigation whatsoever, something I'm extremely proud of. Both officers serve as an asset to the force and they have both worked in Shelby Township for more than 10 years. Out with the old and in with the new for the Shelby Township Police Department. Law enforcement officials will soon be patrolling our community in brand new police vehicles. Deputy Chief Coyle did a great job designing this. Again, it was his vision. Uh, I was just the person to kind of uh, oversee it, make sure it happened, and uh, this is the final product. It took two and a half years for the department to find a company who could put the wraps and the graphics on the vehicles for an affordable price. Well, hopefully in about two and a half years, we have 90% of our fleet will be changed over to the black and whites. Uh, so that's the plan this year. We'll see about six to eight of these vehicles, the black and whites on the road. And so uh, coming soon over the next couple weeks, we'll see probably two or three pretty immediately hitting the roads, hitting the streets and see them out in the public. The officers like the new vehicles and the change of the color. With the change in design, the community members will better identify the police cars. The new cars will be patrolling the streets in our community very soon. Hundreds of people came out to enjoy the Shelby Township fireworks at the Packard Proving Grounds. This marked the first time since 2008 that the fireworks were held to celebrate the 4th of July in the township. Many people brought their friends and family out to the show and enjoyed the display lighting up the night sky. It's such a beautiful night and it's just a great time to be with family and friends. It really is. It's like just enjoying the kids and enjoying the weather, having a good time. Uh, well, we've uh, gone to the fireworks before and it's always a good time and uh, so it's a beautiful day. Come out here to enjoy it with the family. A very quiet night, uh, no crimes reported, nobody arrested, so it was fantastic. And I don't even think we even had to talk to anybody about inappropriate behavior. So. Uh, kudos to the residents here and the families who came out. While the firework display was successful, there was a minor grass fire that broke out and caused hysteria over social media. I got the first call at about 20 after 11 when I was in the middle of grass fire and I, it was literally an argument. I said, no, it's a grass fire. Well, no, it's not what we're seeing. And from 11, 20 until 1 a.m., no one is listening to what I had to say. Calls came flooding into the fire department and the Packard Proving Grounds with people who were concerned about the historic location. It was handled easily. There was no injuries. 
realistically, once we got the cars that were legally parked in the driveway out of the way so we can get our fire trucks in there, um, it, we literally had it out in less than 30 minutes. And this was probably of the years going back prior to 2008 when the township used to do fireworks. There were, we had no reports of injuries, no reports of fights. Um, even given the fact that it was in the middle of a downtown area at 23 and Van Dyke, we really had no incidents um, of it. I thought it was a very nice and quiet. Everyone came in, everyone left. With any event that handles pyrotechnics, the coordinators, including the Shelby Township Fire Department, were prepared to handle any situation as it arose, including the grass fire that broke out after the fireworks show. A brand new pipe will be installed at the site of the Fraser sinkhole. The pipe is roughly 4,000 feet and will repair the collapsed sewer interceptor along 15 Mile Road. On Christmas Eve 2016, the sinkhole displaced 20 families and condemned three family homes as well as caused road closures for the area. The pipe installation is scheduled to begin August 1st and will take about 20 days to complete. The installation process will operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until the project is completed. Overall, the project costs $75 million and it is financed through a municipal bond by the Macomb Interceptor Drainage District, as well as a state grant or low interest loan. Macomb County Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller says that the project is on budget and is on schedule. After the completion of the pipe, as well as the shaft, 15 Mile Road is expected to open by the end of 2017. Get ready to see those orange barrels again because a major intersection will be closed. Shaner at Hall Road will start phase two of the construction series. The intersection will be closed from July 15th to July 25th. The 10 day closure will give crews the opportunity to work on the inside lanes of both westbound and eastbound traffic. In June, the project focused on the right lanes and was finished according to schedule. This work is part of a $60 million project of the reconstruction of Hall Road. Various construction projects along the roadway will be completed by 2018. Coming up on Shelby This Week, we will tell you where you can find great treasures and also sell some of your unwanted household items that you no longer need anymore. Shelby Township Parks and Recreation is in full swing with summer activities for the community but we will tell you where you can start signing up for a fall sport that fills up fast. We have information on a product you probably use a lot of during the summer months. We will give you the information on what you should buy in order to get the most effective use out of this product. Stay tuned. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. be able to tune into NBC for the Summer Olympics, but we have our own Olympics in the township. The annual Kids Summer Olympics inspired kids to be the best they can be. Andrew Shelsky was there and has more. Boys and girls from 3 to 12 competed for awards and prizes in the 22nd annual Shelby Township Kids Day. Beautiful day here. Usually it's the hottest day of the year. We're expecting great weather. Um, we're going to get started pretty soon here with some of the ages. We have three different age groups here. Uh, we have a three to five age group, six to eight age group, and a nine to 12 age group. Uh, as you can see, we got various events here. Uh, we have a couple uh, running events. We have 40 yard dash, 40 yard hurdles, which the kids love to run and knock over. Uh, behind us, we have a couple jumps with the sand pits, and we have uh, frisbee toss and disc toss. We do awards for each event. Uh, we do a first and second place for each event, and we break it up between the boys and the girls. Um, and all this is not possible without our great sponsor, Henry Ford. They've been sponsoring this event for, I think, four years now, as well as other township events. And it uh, wouldn't be possible without them. Pretty much pay for our bounce houses and our ribbons and our uh, awards that we get the kids. Events included 40-yard dash, hurdles, baseball toss, disc toss, broad jump, and long jump. 
I think it's a fantastic event for the kids and the community to come out, have a good time, and you know, just do some nice things for the kids. And it's nice that Shelby Township put this on. I think they're fantastic. Uh, I did uh, Parks and Rec in Warren growing up uh, my entire youth, and I think Parks and Rec is you know an important thing for the cities to have, especially for the kids growing up. They need to be able to get out of the house and, and do some things. So the more things that Parks and Rec can provide, I think is fantastic. I think it's probably even though they're simple, I think the, just the events themselves. Because I mean, how many people have uh, sand pits in their backyards or at their school that they can go jump in a nice sand pits or. Um, you know, obviously the obstacle course is a really nice event, and uh, even the 40-yard dash. I think the kids and the parents like to be timed. Everyone loves that, comp that friendly competition, so I think they enjoy that. Sponsored by the Henry Ford Health System, Parks and Recreation stresses the need for sponsors for other events. No, just if anyone's interested in sponsoring events like Henry Ford does, uh, we have other events throughout the year that uh, we're always taking sponsorship for, and uh, I think it's those sponsorships that make the events really successful where we can add these great things like the, the moonwalk and the obstacle course that makes the, you know, the events really special. For Shelby This Week, I'm Andrew Shelsky. Are you looking to make a little extra cash, and do you have some items you no longer need? If so, the Shelby Township Flea Market is the perfect place to sell your stuff and make a little money. Whispering Woods Park will be home to the flea market this year. The annual Parks and Recreation event will be held on July 22nd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Artists and crafters are also welcome to display and sell their artwork. Vendors will pay $10 for their space and they are required to provide tables and rain protection for their booth area. The event will go on as scheduled rain or shine. The flea market is free to all shoppers looking to purchase items. To reserve your space, you can call 586-731-0300. Summer activities have just begun around the township, but the Parks and Recreation Department is preparing for our next season, fall. Fall ball kicks off around Labor Day and continues until the end of October. We're taking registration for that right now and whether you're a new team um, or a team that played last year and um, just forgot about registration, the good news is we still have openings on every night of the week. Anyone 18 and older who wants to participate in fall softball season can register today. Labor Day weekend is fast approaching, and if you are going away for a trip, take a look at what you're packing because you may want to rethink the bug spray you have. Our Kelly Casuda took a look at the best and worst rated sprays and tells us which ones you should just throw in the trash. Summer is still going strong, but before you head out for your next bonfire or picnic, you want to make sure you're looking at what bug spray you're using. Consumer Reports release their picks for the best and worst bug sprays. Health experts say when looking at sprays, you want one that contains DEET. It's effective at covering several types of insects. The optimal level of DEET 30 to 50 percent. Picardin is also a good ingredient, similar to DEET, but less greasy and safer for kids. These products were rated highest by Consumer Reports and had the best bang for your buck. And what about these store-bought generic brands? They're on the cheaper side, but are they effective? Health experts say yes. If it says 10 percent DEET, it's 10 percent DEET, no matter what the formula. And make sure you're checking the ingredients. It may say all natural, but that doesn't mean it's as effective when it comes to keeping the mosquitoes away. These products were the lowest rated by Consumer Reports. And lastly, what about those all-in-one sunscreen bug spray products? Experts say avoid them. It's best to just put on your sunscreen, let it dry, and then put on your bug spray. Kelly Kasuda, Shelby This Week. Blood donations have significantly decreased in the last few months, and the American Red Cross needs your blood donations. Red Cross officials have declared an emergency for blood in the state of Michigan. The Red Cross has seen 61,000 fewer donations, and the lack of donations has significantly affected the shelves at the hospitals. According to the American Red Cross, the decline is caused by the summer months, and during the year, most of the blood comes from drives at high school and colleges. The Red Cross is in need of any blood type. To find a location near you, visit redcrossblood.org. One Macomb County organization provides services to those who are victims or survivors of domestic violence. 
Arthur Schenk has more about the organization with a mission to provide support for people in the community who need it. Turning Point of Mount Clemens has been helping victims of domestic abuse or assault for well over 30 years. In that time, the facilities, faces, and tasks have changed, but there's one constant. Funds are needed to keep the doors at Turning Point open. And much the way they have adapted to changes over the years, they've had to adapt the way donations are collected. Karen Bates Gazier explains the new way, geocaching road rallies. So people um, put teams together, it's $20 a person, they get in the car, one person has to have a smartphone or something that has GPS capabilities, and they start at Arthur Murray, and you solve a clue, and the clue will give you a latitude and a longitude. You put, punch it in your phone or your GPS device, you drive to wherever that site is, there you find a container that has your next clue, and you solve the clue, and you go on, and, and so on and so on. And I'm not sure how many stops there actually are, but there's, a, I think it's a two and a half hour time limit, and then you have to go back to Arthur Murray, and the team that has solved the most um, caches is the winner. The upcoming scavenger hunt is being put on by the committee for Stepping Out with the Stars, which is another event that helps raise funds for Turning Point. We're really excited about it. It's something we've never done before, and we hope we get a really great turnout. There's prize money involved. There's a portion of the um, money that's raised by the uh, entry fees that's going to be go going back as a prize. And then the rest of it comes to Turning Point as a donation. So if you're new to scavenger hunts or don't know what to expect about geocaching road rallies, Karan can explain. For example, I do know that one of the caches is going to be inside um, a planter someplace. It's going to be tucked behind a planter. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not that compli complicated that you're, you know, digging for buried treasure. But you, you know, you get your, you solve your puzzle, you get your coordinates, you drive to that spot, and the, the puzzle will give you an indication of what you're looking for. And then you pull it out, and there's, my understanding is there's like inside the cache there's a token or something that you're going to have to take a picture of so that they know you were actually there. Everything is kind of revolved around the Arthur Murray Studio at 15 and Van Dyke. Um, the phone number, I think it's 997-2121. They can call and register. The event is Saturday, it starts at 5 p.m. It's two and a half hours with the open dance after. Uh, it's $20 a person, and you can have a team as big as you can fit in your car. So if you have a Spark, your team might be three people, and if you have an SUV, it might be six. It's entirely up to you how big your team is. So grab your phone, gather some friends, and get out for this geocaching road rally. And help Turning Point help those who need it. For Shelby This Week, I'm Arthur Schenk. Turning Point will also host an event called Tara's Walk, which honors the life of Tara Grant. The walk is scheduled for September 30th at 10 a.m. For more information on the walk or about the organization, visit turningpointmacomb.org. Grab your poodle skirts and throw Elvis Presley on the Victrola because we have an event that will take you back in time. Fabulous 50s will take place at the Packard Proving Grounds. The event is benefiting the nonprofit organization, the Packard Motor Car Foundation. There will be dinner, dancing, a live band, and a silent auction with items that have been donated to the cause. Guests are encouraged to wear 50s inspired outfits. If you have a classic 1950s car, you are invited to park inside the gates and show off your vehicle. Bring your families and friends on July 14th from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Tickets start at $50 and can be purchased by the following link on your screen. If you have any questions, you can call 586-739-4800. For 10 years, Shelby Township's RidgeCon Construction has been giving away roofs to the deserving families in the community. This year, Shelby Township residents Anthony and Jasmine Freeman were nominated by their friend to receive a free roof. Their current roof leaks, and due to their daughter being sick and hospitalized, they are unable to fix the problem. The couple is one of four nominees in the running for a new roof. Only one nominee will be the winner on July 24th. RidgeCon is asking for the public to vote on who they think is most deserving to win the new roof valued anywhere between $8,000 and $10,000. You can learn more about the nominees and also place your vote by following the link on the screen below. And that does it for this edition of Shelby This Week. You can watch us online all the time on our Facebook page. Just search Shelby TV. We will leave you now with more scenes from the Kids Summer Olympics. Thanks for watching.